Well, hello, and welcome to the RCC Realistic Car Controller for Unity 3D. Uh, so, it took me a while to make this tutorial because there's quite a lot of steps involved. And I kept messing up. So, this is the best I could do. So, for starters, we're going to click uh, in your project window, uh, type in RCC uh, settings. Make sure you've selected Drift, uh, your controller settings, whatever you're using for your game. Then go to be Behavior Types. Uh, and then here you can basically uh, copy my settings here. This will get you to have the basically my setup of uh, this drifting. Uh, if you play it and really like it, you can copy it. So we're going to move the model into the game here. Uh, I just built a scene that helps me uh, get these cars together. All right, so for starters, select uh, the wheel model, uh, and then we're going to turn this to, into a prefab. And then just make sure everything is selected when you move it, and you didn't miss anything. And then I'm just going to change the... The position, uh, I'm testing it out the rotation here. Uh, just make sure the positions are in are all zero. Uh, if you've ripped models before, you might have seen the, the wheel in that position, and that's pretty much why. All right, so that's what's turned into a prefab. I'm going to um, find the RCC uh, script, uh, and then go around and delete all the wheels to the car. And just leave the rotor. Um, we're going to use that for uh, positioning. And I just uh, click on create necessary game objects. It will create chassis and wheel uh, models in your hierarchy of your model. Uh, then move Th uh, three more wheels into your scene and just copy and paste the the brake rotor positioning to your wheels. This is just the simplest method. You can do others. There's other ways of doing this, but this is just the simplest way to do it for me. And then for uh, the right side of the vehicle, uh, just make sure you switch the wheel to 180 degrees and it will line up perfectly. And this model seems to have uh, where the wheel isn't perfectly round, but I'm going to use it anyways. So here I'm going to find a part of the model to um, use as a mesh collider. And so I found a part that will basically select the whole car. If not, you can use boxes and that can work. I've done it on a few models. Uh, and then I'm just going to move the center of mass to where um, where the center of mass could typically be on a vehicle. And then I'm just going to rename the tires here. Uh, to You can use whatever you want. It's just easier to find what it is. Just create wheel colliders. Uh, then just move the wheel colliders up a little bit or try to center them as much as possible. It will save you a lot of headache in diagnosing and then this this is an error that uh, if the car is too light uh, your it, the car will just disappear so make sure the car has some pretty good mass behind it all right so i'm just going to tweak some settings here just the, uh, for testing just to see how it feels And then I've just 
Um, was, I'm going to mess with uh, the shaders a bit because it, it's kind of annoying me because it doesn't look quite right right now. I just noticed the wheel was just a little too shiny. So I'm just going to uh, resave the the prefab. And then I just realized that my uh, reflection probe wasn't activated. So now everything will look right. And I had things, I had the shaders way too uh, off because I was trying to adjust without reflections. So I'm going to Try to make it look and have the reflections like it would in real life. It, it helps to look at photos of cars and how reflections are. It, that can help. So here we can move the rotors now into the the prefab of, of the wheels. So it will spin with the, the wheel. And that's pretty much it. You have successfully built your car. So I'm going to make sure the brake calipers move when you turn the wheel. I'm just going to find the script here. And then just, uh, it's actually the wheel collider uh, it uses to keep track of the where the caliper is. And there's there's ways to do it with the uh, off-road buggies, but it's a uh, few more steps involved. All right, so I'm going to just increase the spring uh, tightness because it's just a little bit too bouncy. And I'm just messing around with those uh, shaders again because it's just something just doesn't look right. And then uh, I'm going to move the wheel collider positioning because the wheels are just sticking a little bit too far out. And this will move the entire wheel model when the when the car when you actually put uh, are in uh, play. So that's actually the positioning where your wheel model uh, will appear. So I'm just trying to eyeball it. It's just test and retest and try to find the right positioning. So here I have it just a little bit too far in. And 
And that I was just getting a reference of like where the wheels were. And just rinse and repeat. And it's looking just about right. But I'm going to tweak it a little bit more here. And there we go. And now you should have a drift car. And uh, I just noticed these brake calipers were sticking out just a little bit too far. So I'm just going to move them. And it looks like uh, that's perfect. And then, uh, so I'm going to add it to the menus. So you can select it in the menus now. Uh, just click on the RCC canvas. Uh, go down to... Uh, RCC demo manager. Uh, this is how many vehicles are in the in your menu. Uh, so I'm just going to add the Challenger and go to car selections. Uh, this is the naming in the menus. So I'm just going to copy and paste the the name of the car. It, you you can name it whatever you want. Uh, but this is how you uh, find your thing in the menu. So I'm just going to show you that, see, we can select on the Challenger and spawn it. And we can select different vehicles here. And just the, the height of the spawning, I don't know how to fix that. So it's just what we're going to have to deal with. And that's just how you add it to the menus. Now I'm using an asset for for the engine sounds. Uh, it's just drag and drop onto the vehicle. Uh, that's in the description as well. Uh, it is it is a paid asset. Um, the skybox is also another paid asset. Um, and then I'm using uh, post processing as well for the scene. And all those links will be in the description below if you want to check them out. I hope this helps and. You've successfully create a drift drifting game.